Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Claire Pettinger. I'm just going to check the local just... I'm Claire Pettinger from Plymouth University, and this is my colleague Lindsay Withers from Devonport Lifehouse. Um, I'd just like to say at this point that um, Lindsay has recently won a very special award, and it was the National Award for Exceptional Contribution for Homeless Services, and I just wanted to get that in, and I think it deserves a bit of a round of applause. Um, sorry, Lindsay. Um, but I think I, I would like to um, feel that the collaboration that I've had with Lindsay over the last few years has had some sort of impact on that. So our double act today, uh, we're going to be talking about the Food as a Lifestyle Motivator project. The FLM project, as we like to call it, came from previous um, evidence that I was involved in collecting, which was called the Food Cultures project which was a, a range of eight projects across Plymouth, grow, growing, cooking and eating projects that I was involved in evaluating in 2011. And from those projects, we found that there were positive signs that such innovative food projects can increase confidence, self-esteem and skills. So the FLM project, which was funded last year by one of the small collaborative ISSR awards, finally, after three years of hard work, we got some success with funding, which I would like to thank the ISSR for. The aim of our project was to use creative methods to explore the role of food as a potential lifestyle motivator to support well-being and life skills in homeless individuals in Plymouth. We pride ourselves in having a very strong multidisciplinary team, I'm a dietitian, we have a social worker, we have sociology, we have a GP and we have an occupational therapist on the team and we're open to suggestions so if anyone else wants to come on board please feel free. This project promotes both community engagement and social sustainability, hence its funding from the ISSR. I'm going to hand over to Lindsay now. Let me say a little about homelessness in Plymouth. There are usually no more than 10 people actually sleeping rough in Plymouth at any one time. So homelessness and sleeping rough are not the same thing. There are about 200 places in what is called the Plymouth Single Homeless Pathway, which takes people from the streets into emergency safe sleep housing, through hostels and into supported or independent flats. So being homeless is more about difficulties in coping with life and its complexities. If we were to build 200 single housing units reflecting the number of places in the single homeless pathway that would not be a sustainable solution to homelessness it's not so much about building homes or only building homes it's about building up the people as well and in working with homeless people lack of motivation is a major issue which has many contributing factors and consequences now devonport lifehouse the venue of this project is a salvation army homeless center with 62 residents, 54 men and 8 women. It's termed stage 2 housing, which is the last step before a supported or independent flat. And people are able to stay up to two years in Devonport Lifehouse, which gives us a lot of time to work together. And in that time, we place emphasis on improving their health, their well-being and their life skills to enable them to function in the outside world. The challenges that we meet in doing that are pervasive mental illness, low-grade <coughs> depression and anxiety through to more serious and complex conditions. We're dealing with addictions to drugs and alcohol, occasionally gambling, and people generally in the homeless system have low aspirations, low expectations of themselves and of other people, very low self-esteem, and many are institutionalised. And as Claire mentioned, this, uh, this hostel was a setting for the Food Cultures Project and gave us the first hints that we could look at food as a motivator in people's lifestyles. <clears throat> so what exactly do we mean by creative methods? Qualitative methodology is relatively new to me and I find it an extremely challenging process but extremely rewarding. Participatory action research um, is known to engage participants and this is one of the issues we've had with this particular sample group is engagement in the process itself. We've used a range of methodology but the main thing that I'm going to be um, focusing on today, this presentation today, is our photo elicitation methodology 
We have Gia De Prano, who's um, illustrating our poster outside, so please do come and speak to us later if, if anyone's interested in more detail. The photo elicitation method, in a nutshell, involved us giving disposable cameras to the service users, sending them away and asking them to take photos of their food activities over a 10-day period. We then got the photos developed and they came back to um, fo um, gr group discussions with some of their photos to discuss the relationship with food. Um, so that was, that was a really interesting process in itself and some really rich discussion came out um, from, from the service users that did actually return their cameras. We also used creative approaches um, for the analysis. Um, we, we, we've used thematic analysis from a multidisciplinary perspective, but we've emphasised this use of voice-centred relational method, which was completely new to me. Now, what this method actually means is that you take the transcripts and you, you, you extract the I, you, we statements. You get these really powerful narratives about the, about the person themselves. And what this has allowed us to do is generate these I poems an extract of which I'm going to read out to you shortly, which really provides a, a powerful um, narrative of, of the service users that we're exploring. Our analysis are nearing completion. It's been a long process, a long, very interesting process. Um, but they suggest within a very diverse sample group, and we're talking about people who don't fit into set categories, um, a very diverse sample group, food played a varied role in the lives of participants. The photo elicitation themes that we've generated are many, but we've managed to focus them down to power and empowerment, occupation, emotion, meaning of food, and space and place. And it was only at our last research meeting that we realised that it spells out the word poems, which is just perfect for our generation of I poems, which I'll move on to shortly. I'm quite excited about that. Um, so obviously we're very short on time, because have we already had our five minutes? I haven't even noticed that. I'm so absorbed. Um, so um, we're, we're going to be presenting two cases to you today. We've only got time for two, and we're going to be sharing insight into some of the service users' narrative through the use of quotes, some of their own photos that they took, and then I'm going to read an excerpt from one of the I poems. So back to Lindsay. So as we read you the words that our participants have given to us and the photographs that they've taken, please try and remember those themes. We think you'll see them coming out. The first of the participants um, we're presenting to you is his pseudonym, we're using pseudonyms, is Nemo. He's a 43-year-old white male. He's been, at the time of the study, was at Devonport Lifehouse for six months. He has no close relatives. His last work was in a food factory in 1999. He has various health, various health conditions, epilepsy, asthma, and PTSD following an assault, which led to his becoming homeless. He feels institutionalised and has problems dealing with crowds. He is a recovering intravenous drug user and is on a methadone script. So Nemo told us, I've taken a picture of food before I eat it, a picture of food after I've eaten it, and whatever's left is the food I can't eat. I can't eat in the dining room because I'm scared of crowds and large groups of people. Manners, elbows out, passing wind and shouting at each other. The second case study is Ross. A 34-year-old British white male from London, he's lived at Devonport House on various occasions and this time since 2013. His current stay followed a short prison sentence. He's got a teenage son by a previous relationship and a new partner who's just given birth to a baby girl. He has diabetes and is overweight. He was formerly a heavy drinker but drinks very moderately now. Whilst at the centre he's achieved an NVQ level 1 and 2 in catering and his aspiration is to be a full-time chef. Ross is currently employed part-time as relief cook and night receptionist at Devonport Lifehouse. 
And I'm now going to recite excerpts for you from Ross's eye poem at the same time as showing a backdrop of some of his photos that he took as part of the photo elicitation. We put our best. I first come here, I was a resident. I got the opportunity. I just progressed. I really enjoy cooking. I've gone turning myself around. I've done, I made the recipe myself. I mean, I've got a little family. I'm working Christmas, you can put me down. We started, I think, we started. You're hungry, you know, you can grab yourself a sandwich. I got silly pictures, I should have taken more. I should have took more care. I took a picture of Haribo, I don't know why. I like them as well. We've had a meeting, we've had few complaints. <coughs> what I mean, I don't put a lot of salt in. I always think, I've seen some of the guys, I've said to them, I've already put salt in. You'll see them. You can order salad, I might have that tonight. I mentioned it. We'll have a lot of wastage, you'd be surprised. We was having a think about the menus. I know it's like me going back to prison, you get four meals. We don't have this, we don't have that, you know? And I think I like cooking. I would love to try, I do have ideas. I try to put that into my food. I say, have a salad, there you go. We've got salad, we've got chips. I'm hungry, I'm starving, I'm finding the ones. We've got so many youngsters, you know? When you're trying to serve them, you can hear them. I'm trying to listen. I've never seen anything. I mean, I feel sorry. I mean, I did my shift. I had to go up to them. I didn't lose my rag. I went up to them and said, you either stop or you're out. <coughs> how I did it, how I could do it. I could either go up or down. I was, where am I going to go? I went into the kitchen. I used to get up in the morning. I mean, I'd done my training with you. I was helping. Look how far I've come. All I think of now, I just think I'm doing OK. I'm on the right road, you know. I would like to branch out, go somewhere, you know. You can't go anywhere. I did. I haven't looked back. I use my own imagination, my own creativity. I just go in there. So in Ross's words, food has become a major part of my life. I really enjoy cooking. Actually, it beat the demons in my head. Look how far I've come, I just go in there. It's like being in a restaurant, using the imagination, just see things. I like to try different things and flavors. In our words, Ross's life is still precarious on many fronts, but we believe that his passion about food, the fact that the kitchen is his refuge, and that cooking allows him to express himself, offer him the best chance that he can get to secure his future. Next steps is FLM2. I have a deadline of next week, and I'd like to thank Susan for helping me with my current British Academy bid, which is due in next Wednesday, I believe. Um, so we are, we're, we're wanting to work and evolve the photo elicitation method. We found a really good way of hearing the voices of our service users. We're going to be running participatory food events, and we've got the sign-up already. Um, of a range of centres across Plymouth to access a wider range of marginalised groups. So this is a really exciting stage for us. And we're looking at developing some sort of asset-based framework by which we can capture, maximise and evaluate best practice in relation to food activities happening across the cities in various centres that are accessed by socially excluded groups. Um, that's it. Yes, our acknowledgements. <laughs> acknowledgements, yeah, thanks to the ISSR and thanks to everyone else and, yeah, solutions for social sustainability.